Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. It's been a roller coaster week and a bit for ESCOM. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the highs and the lows. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The big news so far this year has been the appointment of a new board and a new acting CEO. That's correct. I think uh, the reportage early on the year, we, we, we came to realize the dire financial situation that Eskom was in and the fact that there was really no room for maneuver with an, a board that was not no longer credible or perceived to be credible and an executive team that was uh, also incredibly tainted by the events of the last few years. And therefore, on the, on the 20th of January, Saturday, there was much excitement on social media as the initial reports started to come through that maybe the former finance minister, Tlantlanene, had been appointed chairman of, of Eskom. Later in the day, we got the news that it wasn't Tlantlanene, but Jabba Mubuza, also a highly respected individual, um, uh, and Pakamani uh, Khadebe uh, had been appointed uh, Mabuza as the chairman of this new very credible board that's sort of packed with uh, high caliber business people. And then uh, Pakamani Khadebe is going to be the acting CEO um, coming in as another acting CEO, but also with good credentials out of the finance community. And given that Eskom's facing so many financial uh, challenges and quite immediate um, with the massive holes that they're going to have to fill and they need to be able to probably either find well find bridging finance to clo to deal with re refinancing some of the loans up to 20 billion in the next couple of months they're going to be able to now approach I think the banks uh, with credible leadership um, even though it's going to still be a, a tough sell and once they have you know some sort of bridging or s certainty I think then they can re-establish their credentials to go access uh, the capital markets once again. I think both those avenues have been closed to uh, Eskom for a number of months. So I think the country breathed a collective sigh of relief on Saturday when we heard that there's this new credible board and it showed that the, the winds of change that started blowing after the election of Sir Ramaphosa in December are now blowing a gale at Eskom. And we, I suppose, as South Africans, are hoping that's going to uh, continue blowing a gale in other sect sectors of society, other state-owned enterprises. And I think all eyes will be on, um, you know, what happens with President Zuma and the cabinet. The ghosts of ESCOM's recent past were also very much in evidence this week. That's right. <coughs> you know, um, obviously there was the, the happiness or the enthusiasm of, of the country around the new board, but you know, there's there's deep problems at ESCOM. And um, the, the issue or the, uh, the spectre of corruption and state capture really hangs over the utility still. And uh, the parliamentary inquiry continued this week and therefore a very roller coaster in terms of emotions, the highs of the weekend and then again the lows of the week as uh, you know, we had Anoj Singh and uh, Marcella Coco presenting, them, they, or presenting themselves before this parliamentary committee. And I think batting away a lot of the issues raised by the committee, um, keeping their powder dry for any commission of inquiry, more legal process that is likely to come. And I think really what we saw this week is that the sooner that the uh, commission of inquiry process under uh, uh, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zonda starts, the better. So politically, it's been very uh, strong, a powerful tool. But if we want people to be financially or ultimately even criminally accountable, this is not the way to go because there's just too many procedural gaps uh, in the way the process is, is being run. So hopefully we'll have the Commission of Inquiry terms of reference any minute now. And, uh, and if those are not contested, uh, we can get going as, uh, as uh, Judge Justice Zonda said, he's ready to get going and have a much more thoroughgoing uh, and legally competent approach to this issue of it's a very complex issues that uh, have to be dealt with and you uh, to expect MPs that are not close to these matters or technically competent and also uh, an individual um, to really run with these as, 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 as an evidence leader I think was expecting a lot but I don't think uh, and I think it's getting to the point where Zonda might even have to dismiss some of the evidence that has been led there that's getting to that point of you know legal gaps so I think the sooner we can get into that commission of inquiry process, the better. The regulators, meanwhile, also gearing up for more hearings. Yes, so back to the future uh, for Eskom. So we've had the ha, as I said, of <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, the new board and the new uh, acting CEO, the low of looking back 
at some of the recent past. And then back to the, the negative normal, as I would call it, where we're going to be getting back into a series of hearings this year into Eskim's real fundamental problem. And that is that actually the tariff that it gets out of us consumers is not, given its current structure, sufficient to, for it to operate uh, its business uh, in a fin financially sustainable way. So we saw last year that we had hearings into a, a single year tariff, which was uh, adjudicated um, by our NERSA and we're given 5.23% from April 1 this year. Eskom was asking for 19.9% and I think there's going to be a lot of interest in the reasons for decision um, because uh, uh, you know, Eskom's going to and the new leadership will want to see whether the reasons for decisions given by NERSA should be contested or not. If they are, that's going to be another legal process. If not, I think the next big hearings are going to be held in May between the 7th and 25th into the three outstanding regulatory clearing accounts applications. Now these are outstanding because we had a court case a few years ago uh, where uh, the High Court adjudicated the last RCA application uh, to be unlawful. Uh, therefore we had a, a period of a couple of years where NERSA didn't uh, adjudicate further RCA applications, even though those, those were accumulating and Eskom were submitting, was submitting those uh, applications. And these are basically in the tariff methodology if there's been efficient expenses incurred that haven't been catered for in the tariff that was, uh, was uh, determined. Um, and we know that was supposed to be 8% a year over a five year period. Um, then the Eskom can, uh, can apply f to recoup that. or they will have to give up any uh, gains that they made that you know, the tariff catered for, but they didn't have those expenses. But it's always been one-way traffic, and Eskom's always come cap in hand for more um, for to recoup or claw back some of the what they call revenue that they, they, they forfeited during the period. And we see these collectively, these three applications offer 66 billion rand, and these will have to be liquidated through the tariff. Now, NERSA will have to adjudicate and will have hearings uh, and determine whether these are were efficiently incurred expenses and uh, that's going to be another I suppose hostile process. The difference this time is there'll be credible leadership uh, on the other side of the aisle and uh, it will be interesting to see how NERSA responds to that, that new credibility that Eskom will bring but there'll be a lot of negativity that around that. Plus Eskom has only made a single year application to for 2018, 2019, so we'll have to make a multi-year application this year. So it's going to be a year of adjudicating tariffs. And I think what we're going to see is a pushback from society that says, you know, either the methodology or the Eskom business model is not fit for purpose because we're just going to be seeing uh, Eskom probably justifiably and rationally asking for more and more in terms of the model. And I think that's going, both are going to come under serious scrutiny. And I think more and more there's going to be attention being paid to the Eskom business model and whether it really is fit for purpose and whether it really can contain tariffs at a reasonable level and an affordable level. And I think that's where the focus later in the year. So at the moment, very much uh, sort of the new broom at uh, the leadership level or the new brooms, and then also the dealing with the, the past allegations of capture. But I think the focus is going to look, look more and more at Eskom sustainability as we move into these uh, more fundamental about the business hearings in the later, latter half of the year. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.